All right, so here we have a 1979 uh, realistic model uh, 31-1987. Now this is a 79, not a 1987. I don't really get why they named it that. I thought that was kind of silly, but 70s graphic equalizer. And I think this is built by Pioneer. Um, or Yamaha, one of the two. At least that's what the guy at the actual, like it was an actual vendor thing, not some flea market or thrift store. It was at an actual record store. And the guy knew what he was talking about. So I guess I believe that. Um, it looks very Pioneer, and it also looks pretty Yamaha too. But there is something on the inside that made me question both of those. Um... Now, I still think that it was made by one of the two, but it kind of interesting brand components on the inside. And the problem with this is that I have it only I have it on the left channel only right now. I muted all the right channels and I'm just going to use this slider because the problem is with this slider. Audio cuts out whenever it gets above plus 4 decibels. Now, it's happened like that since I got it, and it only really does that once it's warmed up and played for a little while. And yes, I did try the, qu I did try the trick of putting some uh, quick freeze or easy freeze or whatever it is in there. I sprayed a little in there to try to get it to be really, really cold really fast, and it didn't solve the problem. So I'll demonstrate the problem now. So as you can hear, Hear that? Just cuts out. There, it's there again. And when you get it down, then it's kind of scratchy, like it's dirty. Which is common with those kind of slider switches. I want to get a copyright strike for that. But I already have it mostly taken apart. All the screws are out uh, for what I'm looking for. And I guess, let's see the inside. So here we are with the front and top off. And yes, it is unplugged, and yes, I did drain it. It's capacitor juice, so it shouldn't shock me. Those are 50 volt capacitors. I'm kidding. But let's start off with this transformer. As you can see, we have a code on there. 13th week of 1979. So this is an early model, because I think they made it up until like I think 80 or 82 or somewhere in there. Um, I did find it in the 79 and 80 uh, catalogs. So it's probably, I think it's in the 81 catalog. So it's probably in the 82. But anyways, that's not very important. Something that is kind of cool with it though is that most of these parts on this board are made by Honda. And I do believe that that is the Vroom Vroom Honda. Um, because I think that, I, I don't think there would be an electronics company also named Honda. Uh, I'll try to get a shot of that. I'll try to get a shot of a Honda branded component. This is as much as it'll come apart without desoldering stuff. That's okay, because look at that, we got a shot right there. See that? It says Honda. It also has a big... H right there, which might mean Honda, it might not, because I feel like if it was Honda, then it would have the square around it too, like the old Honda logo. But let's talk about solving this issue with the potentiometers. Now, it could be an issue with a cold solder joint down here. There's quite a bit of stuff. I think that this potentiometer ends after all of those right there. So you have quite a bit to look at. Although it hasn't been the worst, it's not the worst it could be. There could be like hundreds and hundreds of things I have to look through, but it'll take a little bit. So we do have a weird looking solder joint right there in the middle of the screen. I'm just looking through one of those uh, super magnifying glass. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to redo that one. 
there's a couple of things on here that seem kind of weird, and that is that they all seem to be missing maybe a sixteenth of the solder plate, the little copper thing that the that okay, the little copper thing that you see there. See that? There's like a little tiny chunk taken out of each one. I don't know how much I like that. It must just be machine soldered or something. I really don't know. Maybe, uh, yeah. So I'm gonna update some of these. And we can see if that does anything. Also, I wanna take a look at those. So, I know it's not pretty, and don't mind that black stuff that's just from the soldering iron head. But, oops, oops, crap, oops. Um, but, yeah, it works. And the reason why I put that bridge in there is because when I was resoldering that left joint in the pair, I actually felt that little copper plate kind of pry up a little bit from the side that it's not supposed to do that. So just to be sure, I just built a bridge right there in case they weren't making connections somehow which is which is possible i don't i don't know if i'd say as likely but it's possible so i'm going to take a little peek at a few more of these see if they need a little more solder or need to be cleaned up or something and then i'll test it from there one thing nice about this unit is that look at this it actually has a plate that you can take out that lets you inspect the bottom of this board so you don't have to take it out, which would require desoldering a ton of those wires. So that's really nice. That was, that's good engineering. That's an interesting looking one of those. See those coils around it? It's one of those IF transformer type things, which I, at least were used as IF transformers. And newer radios from maybe the like late 50s on. But I'm sure that they probably have other uses, but that's... Kind of strange, I've never seen one with coils around it. Right there. So it looks like I can bring it up to about seven or eight before it stops. Or that, I guess, seven or six. So, uh, it works up to there now. And what I did is I looked in there, and I looked against the plate that this thing, like, travels on. I noticed that it was pretty dirty, so I just stuck this down there and kind of just touched it a little bit in the spot that wasn't working. That's what came out. <clears throat> so, I think I'm going to try to snake something like this in there and clean all of that. And if I can do it very efficiently, then I'll clean all of them. But, this is a good start. All right, well, I think I got it good enough. It, that's where it quits right there, which is good enough for me because this thing, I mean, I'm really not going to crank it up to plus 12 decibels on the bass. It's just going to sound like one of those like bass boosted YouTube videos. So I think this is where I'm going to stop it. Um, I don't want to wreck anything. I did clean out the pot with the uh, uh, little uh, variable pot with the q-tip though um and it seemed to work okay i went through both of the q-tips but i think this is where i'm going to call it just because i don't want to wreck anything because i'm actually going to use this um i like this thing so anyways um thank you for watching and yeah thanks